We already have our review online of the Dataland RX 580, not 580, 2048. It's basically a 570 Ti is what this is. And in the review, went on to rant about how AMD is lying, there's no other word for it, by calling this a 580. But that's only half of the story. The other half is a more fun one. It's to look at what this thing actually is like, because this is a different product for us. We don't work with the company Dataland in the US. Never even heard of it before this product. So it should be kind of fun to take apart a different vendor's card for once, different manufacturer's card, and see what they do in their assembly process and shroud and heatsink design, stuff that we might not have seen in cards that we normally work with. Now, this already has a couple thermocouples sticking out of it. We installed those, obviously. But what we need to do is take apart the rest of it, reclaim those, and see how the quality of components and the heatsink is underneath, if only because it's interesting to see a different region's video card, the Dataland X Serial, this one is called, for the RX 580 2048, which is a 570. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte RTX 2070 Gaming OC, now available in a matte white model to match the emergence of white PC cases. The RTX 2070 Gaming OC uses a three-fan cooling solution and four composite heat pipes on NVIDIA's newest Turing GPU, and ships with a pre-overclock of 1740 MHz in OC mode, or 1725 in gaming mode. RGB Fusion is also available for the LED enthusiast. Learn more at the link in the description below. So for basics, if you missed it, an RX 580 2048, it is a 570, it's got a little bit higher clock, and that's about it. As for the rest of this, it's a dual fan cooler for the X serial card by Dataland, and that is using a, uh, just a, a plastic shroud, pretty cheap really, if you kind of, you can push the shroud into the fans if you wanted to, and that's covering the, the dual fan setup. For the heat sink, the fins are oriented horizontally, so the air will exhaust out the front of the card and the back of the card rather than the top and the bottom, which can be useful to know in some cases. It's got a couple of heat pipes, but we need to take it apart to see those closer. And then also before the original disassembly where we put the thermal couples on, there was a, there still is, but it's damaged. There's a sticker on the back that says warranty void if removed, uh, which this is a China only product. So not gonna go on the same rant as we do typically for those because the laws aren't the same there and we're not familiar with them. Uh, that said, we didn't remove it, we put a hole through it to get the screw out. So it's still on there. But where the hole is, there used to be the letters T-U-L. And that company is the parent company for power color. So not 100% sure of how the relationship is between this Dataland product and power color, but the T-U-L branding may be an indication of some kind of subsidiary relationship. So let's take this thing apart. It's uh, about 180 USD, just to give you an idea of what we're working with. And the screws are pretty straightforward, there's only a couple of them. So we can get a, a quick look at the card, and also it's got four gigabytes of RAM, so that's gonna come into play in a moment as well. So here's the close-up of the card. You can see the shroud very much fits the X-Serial branding, as they call it. So this X-Series card only has a couple screws in the back, and we're gonna use the iFixit Protec Toolkit, which we'll link this down in the description below if you wanna pick one up. Uh, so this is pretty straightforward, this part. It's four screws for the cold plate and the heat sink mounting. Now let's move this stack of video cards out of the way so I can use our mod mat uh, GPU teardown grid. And this also is on store at gamersnexus.net if you want to pick up one of these for your own teardown project. It's got PCIe pinouts, power pinouts, things like that as well. Okay, so four screws there. There's the warranty void if removed one. Uh, as noted, we didn't remove the sticker. So I think we're good. If I have to send it back, we can still do so. That used to say TUL though. That was the interesting part with that sticker as opposed to normally. And let's take out two more. So these are sprain tension screws as well. These go towards the IO side of the video card. And we're up to six screws. At this point, this probably comes out. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here's, here's the heat sink fan and PCB combination. Just separate these. Okay, much better than the XFX one. Okay, so VRM straight away is interesting, but not really that interesting. We've seen this before on a lot of low end cards where they'll pack the VRM in over on the left side of the card instead of the right largely for space saving reasons. They can make the rest of the PCB smaller. And also a part of this requirement of needing to save some space on the PCB 
because you'll notice it actually has eight memory modules, so two, four, six, eight. But it's a four gigabyte card. Now, typically, you'll see four modules or something like that if it's four gigabytes. Well, this one's running eight, so they are uh, only 512 megabyte per module in this instance, which does take up more space. You end up using this whole row here instead of using it for the VRM, whereas that could fit elsewhere if it had fewer modules on it. So for the VRM, let's take a look at that. 4C55N is the MOSFET. For the controller, it's an IR3567B. And then for the memory, so this one, is it all the same memory? It looks like it's all Samsung. And this is GDDR5 memory. It is uh, all Samsung. Uh, the interesting thing here, though, if you look closely, there are two memory modules and then the GPU itself that deserve closer attention. And that is because you'll see that it looks like there's uh, a different attachment method for these where it almost looks manual, like it was done not by a uh, pick and place machine. So you look at the border of this memory module and you'll see the blackout border, whereas the other ones don't have it. And we'll talk with some of our manufacturing contacts and ask why you would typically see this this type of uh, border. It's not like, I mean, it's glossy, but it's not like it's thermal pad grease. You could kind of, uh, you might think it's thermal pad grease because it does look wet, but that's just gloss. It is not uh, thermal pad grease. So we'll ask why, or if you know, feel free to let us know why this would happen in an assembly or manufacturing process. But it does look like uh, the, these may have been attached by hand or at least separately from the other six modules, which would be interesting, but not 100% sure of the significance of that. And then as for the GPU, uh, let's just clean it off and see if it says anything. AMD GPUs typically do not say anything on them, whereas NVIDIA will label their uh, model number. Yes, nothing on there. But that is, in fact, an RX 570, which has been called the RX 580 in this instance. So if you haven't seen Polaris in a while, there's your reminder of what it looks like. Hasn't changed. For the cooler, this is, we've got a copper cold plate in the middle, direct contact cold plate. And then uh, we'll look at the rest in a second. So uh, clearly thermal pad to contact the entire VRM over here. You can see the doubler imprints there with the MOSFET imprints as well. And then uh, the inductor line, so all the chokes, end up in this chamber. They don't have direct contact to the heat sink, but that's actually okay because they can take a whole lot of heat. And the thermals are actually not bad on this thing based on our testing. Uh, separately, the inductors are immediately below a fan anyway. So having that direct contact really is, is kind of irrelevant in this instance because it's got a fan blowing straight onto them. They could take 150C they're fine. So that's the chamber for the inductors. Uh, we have an aluminum base plate for contact to the memory, which you can see over here. And is this aluminum? I'm going to say either aluminum or yes, that's got the marks of aluminum on it. So that is aluminum. So aluminum base plate for the memory contact is via pad. And then uh, also the VRM shares that same plate for the MOSFETs. As for this plate, let's take this thing apart and just, I mean, it should really just reveal the heat sink, but it shows part of the assembly process. So we can take that off as well. So we take these screws. Out. This, by the way, this is, what we, this is what we would have been looking for in that XFX Fat Boy. Why they didn't do this is kind of unclear. Their version of, of the plate is a bit odd, but either way, this plate will contact everything without leaving uh, gaps between things, without using stainless steel, which is really a, not a good conductor. Oh, whoa, interesting. That was unexpected. <laughs> Got some rails in there. Uh, cool, I haven't seen that kind of assembly before. So just some rails inside. Dataland's got a better assembly process than all that XFX card. So they've just got some rails in there. Uh, this is not a good way to do this necessarily either. We've seen better, but for a cheap card, maybe it makes sense. Either way, doing the rails in there means that the screws have something they can mount to and secure against. 
while still enabling a fully flat plate for conduction purposes. So that's good. And by the way, I just reminded of the, th the heat pipes here. So for the heat pipes, there are three of those, and they look to be about eight millimeter uh, heat pipes. Uh, two eight millimeter, one six millimeter heat pipe by eye. Can't get in there. They soldered the heat pipe to the plate. So even though it's got those screws in it for retention, I guess, we would have to decouple the plate from the fins and the heat pipes. This is a uh, reasonably good quality actually better than expected so yeah in order to uh to separate this you'd have to to break the solder the bond between the rest of it uh, between the fin stack the heat pipes and the plate so this is actually better assembly than expected uh despite those things kind of being a bit of a surprise so we're not gonna be able to remove that for the rest of it then it's all pretty basic. It's a two fan cooler. It's got three heat pipes. It's really not amazing, but considering the relatively low amount of heat output it's dealing with a couple hundred watts max, uh, it's fine. So that's the Dataland RX 570Ti that AMD has created. And there's really not much else to say about this one. It's, it's pretty straightforward. There is, however, looks like there is actually a, a BIOS switch though. One more thing to remove here is the back plate of the PCB. Got distracted by the cooler. Well, they forgot to put the barcode, the part ID, and the EAN code on it. There's nothing special at all on the backside. So, uh, standard backside of a PCB for a video card. And that, at this point, that is all there is to the RX 580 2048. If you're interested to learn more about this card in its assembled form, go to the review. We have that online talking about performance numbers for it, thermals included, noise included, and of course, gaming benchmarks versus the actual RX 570 and actual RX 580, the real one, with 2304 FPUs instead of 2048. So thank you for watching. Subscribe for more as always. Go to store.gamersnexus.net if you want to pick up a mod mat like this one which we use for screw tracking and also a helpful PCIe and EPS wiring guide. Patreon.com slash GamersNexus if you want to help us out there. We'll see you all next time.